This video is a recap of the second lab in the Hydrologic Applications Workshop which was part of the Conservation Applications of LIDAR. This material was prepared by Sean Vaughn, a DNR GIS hydrologist. This lab talks about some of the basic steps involved in DEM conditioning. This material can be found on the MinGeo website under the Elevation LIDAR subdirectory in the workshop training materials and it is a, a part of the second exercise of the uh, hydrological applications. It assumes you're familiar with the lecture on hydrological applications and the earlier material on DEM display. Now for this video I'm going to deviate a little bit from the handout. The handout material was prepared for a class exercise where we passed out data layers that the students examined in this first part of the lab. Since we don't have the ability to pass out all these detailed layers, I'm going to discuss the complete picture at the beginning and then we will step through several of the the important steps that you would go through to complete DEM conditioning. Primarily breaking the digital dams and doing the topo to raster operation. Now what you're seeing in front of you is the original DEM that you would work, you would, uh, you were using for an example. This would be the DEM, uh, a DEM that you would download from your particular area of interest. And in this DEM, uh, as I've shown in the earlier uh, labs, that I've got this DEM with a hill shade displaying uh, through it. <clears throat> so I've got the DEM with some transparency, and the, the hill shade is showing so that you're clearly able to see the roads here, and you're able to see some information about the water. Uh, the higher areas are displayed in the dark, the lower in the, the blue. Now, in order to go to proceed with this process, that we would uh, go through a steps, and we'll go through. Uh, we don't go through all of this in this exercise, but we would. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we've gone through this in earlier uh, labs where we talk about terrain analysis and uh, the idea of a watershed. But the one important step as we're exploring this original DEM would be to talk about the issue of filling those sinks or filling those areas where water uh, could accumulate and could collect up into a certain threshold uh, and then spill out so that we in order to get water to flow on this landscape we would have to fill in all those dead ends. Now in a, a average rainfall or a moderate uh, season they might very well trap water uh, on the landscape in those sinks but we're assuming in this process that we're, we're just having water move across the entire landscape in sort of a simple method by filling this. And here again we've got the, the uh, a, a hill shade underneath showing us. So we've filled in all the dead ends essentially, the sinks in this, so water will move. Now that's not totally uh, accurate, but that it is uh, a good basic assumption as we begin our analysis. Uh, now the next thing we have to do after we've filled the, that DEM, so every cell is spilling to another cell, um, that we would do some sort of flow direction. And we've done this in earlier labs where we talked about which way the flow, uh, uh, which way the water is flowing. And these are in cardinal directions, these flow directions. Um, and then, uh, then after we've determined which way the water is flowing, we're talking about how they're accumulating. And so we're looking at the flow accumulation so that the white cells are where many cells are spilling into it so that we might assume from these white uh, areas that that's where water would be starting to flow on the landscape. So in these dark areas you have a one cell spilling to a neighboring cell and in these white areas you have many cells spilling into this, uh, this particular potential water course. So then after we've done the the flow accumulation in the earlier lab, we could reclassify that flow accumulation 
and taking out the very, very high values, those that have many cells spilling into it, in this case 150 cells spilling into it, and we could see where, uh, at least the computer thinks, water would be flowing on this landscape. Now that's assuming we've filled every one of the sinks, and there's all this, quite a number of assumptions. So if we put this on top of our, our DEM, uh, that we can see that uh, the, you get an idea of where the computer thinks water is moving on the landscape. And you can see that there's, there's going to be some areas of, of problem. Uh, you're getting an idea of where the water courses are, and you're seeing some areas, some uh, uh, of the land areas spilling into the stream correctly, and you're getting an idea of here, it's, it should be spilling into the stream, and it's spilling this way. So there's, there's some confusion here in this... Um, uh, uh, from the initial computer uh, classification, reclassification of the, the flow accumulation. Now another uh, step that we do is to calculate, and we did this in an earlier lab, is to calculate the TPI, and the TPI is the uh, topographical position index, and this is, we've, we've calculated this in several different ways using a circle uh, with a radius of one cell or a circle with a radius of three cells and basically what this is showing is the high areas on the landscape so we're taking the slope of every cell and we're taking the average of the cells around it and then we're comparing that cell to the average of those cells around it so we're essentially finding those high areas and the white is the highest and the black would be the dark so you're seeing some of the the dark areas here where where there are low spots where water should be flowing and the the very high areas here obviously being some of the roads or, uh, or high areas within the field so you're getting an idea of, of some of the layers that we're examining to, um, to try and understand this landscape but the basic the basic process that we're going to be going through is uh, using the uh, our original DEM and our original DEM in this exercise we're going to be uh, using the uh, digital dam breach locations and I'll put that on the top here so you can see that we'll be trying to um, uh, establish flow in these areas that the computer from its initial processing uh, says is a dam and the reason it says it's a dam is because of the road uh, and the, it doesn't understand there's a culvert or there's some underlying structure that the LIDAR is not uh, understanding to correctly route uh, water on the landscape. So we have to uh, condition that. Now what's required in these particular areas, and we're working in these four areas, what's required for this processing would be, and this is what we'll be using, what's required would be our contours, all right, uh, and the contours for the area are uh, dam breaks, and we'll do this uh, where we draw the little lines in to the, the areas uh, where we have found, uh, I'll put that on so you can see, we draw little lines into this, um, this process to break through those digital dams. We have to have a boundary layer, some sort of outline to say this is our bounding extent, uh, that we're, we're working on. And then the, the, the important piece, and we'll do this in the lab, is that we have to work on a point layer. So basically what we, what we do is that we use the original DEM and we take that original DEM and we convert that to a point layer. And then in our processing we would be using our, the contours and the outline and then our dam breaks, and our dam breaks always have to go from upstream to downstream, so we're breaking it the way water's flowing, so that we would break, create these breaks on the landscape, uh, and that then it adjusts those points within this point layer, which is a, a version, uh, an interpretation of the original DEM, and then from that it then recalculates a new raster, which we have here in our results, and this is what we'll do at the end, is that we now have a hydrologically conditioned um, a DEM layer. So at least from the point of view of these four particular areas, we've conditioned it so that when water is moving on the landscape, it's no longer pooling here 
uh, and, and pooling here uh, because there's a culvert that the LIDAR didn't see here. There's, there's some, uh, there's some uh, process here that the LIDAR is misunderstanding, another culvert perhaps here. So by putting in, by breaking those digital dams, we're able to create the, a more accurate view of how water is flowing on the landscape. Now there's a couple of um, minor items but important parts uh, in the exercise where we're talking about when we're doing this processing we want to make sure that we're, we're displaying the information and, and storing things in uh, logical locations. Um, now in the exercise we talk about re remembering when we're doing processing to be concerned about the environment and uh, we have to establish our workspace where we're we're processing the data um, and we have we want to keep our scratch workspace and make sure our processing extent and our snap raster uh, is set to uh, our DEM3, the base DEM, because we want to make sure all the data layers that we, we handle and work with all snap and all line up on top of each other and that we know where things are being processed. The other piece that's a recap from the earlier talk is when we're displaying the data, uh, we've got some, some information that we, we've done before using uh, making sure our resampling on the screen is bilinear because it's continuous data and that our transparency, uh, our hill shade is shining through the, the transparent DEM for our style and we've using some colors that we've talked about before. Uh, the DEM, the traditional uh, Esri DEM colors, for example. Now, now before we go any further, we want to just recap why we're doing this and talk about some of the issues that the LiDAR processing has to uh, deal with, some of the problems that it encounters and why we have to do the, the conditioning to add that additional information to help uh, correctly route water on the landscape is we're looking here at a filled uh, DEM hillshade and in the lower left of our DEM and you can see that the water is being pooled here it appears as if water is flowing this direction but is being pooled because of this digital dam now what we if we were to look at the flow accumulation we did the flow direction flow accumulation and if we were to look at the flow accumulation you can see that it thinks the the, the, from the LiDAR data, we're able to say that water is, is, uh, is moving and accumulating at these white areas. This is where there's large number of cells spilling together, forming what it appears to be forming this stream. But if we were to reclassify that, to say instead of having hundreds of thousands of cells coming together, we were just looking at where 150 cells uh, come together to spill. You can see that it fairly accurately represents the landscape here, but here there's a, a lot of confusion. And, and that's what the point of this is, that there is uh, uh, something happening here. There's a digital dam, something we have to add additional information. Now if we put the, the TPI, the topographic position index, those are the looking at the high and the low, um, the, the extreme high values being here on the roads and the lowest being here in, in what is the, the stream beds, you get an idea of, of how, uh, how there's quite a difference between the 150 uh, reclassification of the flow accumulation and where the streams uh, are uh, on the, in the landscape. Here it's quite accurate. Over here, it's uh, it's uh, it's all confused, and so we're going to have to add some uh, some additional information to help correct this or condition it. And uh, and in this case, you you'll see some other examples of some digital uh, dams that are needed on the landscape. And we're only examining for this analysis these three, and there's another fourth that's not showing in our step by step. Thank you.